Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger. In this lecture, I will introduce you to the major groups of primitive jawless fish living during the early Paleozoic. Jawless fish are collectively called agnathid fish, a paraphyletic grouping of fish that lack jaws. In this video, I'll quickly highlight the various groups of agnathid fish. Conodonta. These egomatic teeth were first discovered in 1856, found in abundance in marine limestones spanning the late Cambrian to the end of the Triassic. Paleontologists have used these isolated tiny little teeth in the biozonation of the Paleozoic, yet they had no idea what these creatures actually look like. Now these tiny teeth, they fit on the heads of pins, but many people had wondered if these teeth belong to some sort of worm. In 1983, the first body fossil of a conodont was discovered by Derek Briggs and Owen Clarkson. Many invertebrate paleontologists who had become interested in some of these chordates found within inver the invertebrate-rich Ganton shrimp beds near Edinburgh, Scotland, and they noticed that these chordate specimens had tiny teeth that seemed to resemble the teeth of conodonts. And when they showed these specimens to Richard Alteridge, a specialist in conodont teeth, he realized what they had found. Now, aside from their hard enamel teeth, conodonts resemble the tube-shaped worms, but they have the characteristic uh, segmented muscles, and they have a more advanced brain, and they have eyes. They even have a dorsal and ventral fins along their eel-like bodies. Now, the eyes are much more advanced than we have seen before, with extrinsic eye muscles that would allow the conodont to shift the eye in following movement, as well as an eye capsule. Thus, vertebrates were able to see more clearly than before. Aranda spinda. The Aranda spinda are the first group of jawless fish to evolve scales and armor over their bodies for protection. These are found in the Ordovician of Australia and South America. Now they have a number of advanced features. First is their armor, which consists of two large plates that cover the dorsal and ventral sides of the head, like a sandwich. And between these two plates are brachial platelets, which likely served as gill slit openings. The eyes are positioned on the anterior or front side of the head, which allowed these primitive fish to judge distances by using stereoscopic vision. This likely helped these fish navigate through the water better, giving them the ability to make out the distance of both food and predators. The dorsal plate has two small openings for the pineal eye which was another light-sensitive gland that helped the fish judge the time of day. Aranaspidines lack fins, except for the caudal fin associated with the tail, so the fish lack the mobility of modern fish. The scales, which are composed of dentine, contain three layers, a laminar layer, a honeycombed layer above, and a spongy tubercle layer on the outside. These scale-like features featured a network of cells within them. Several beautifully preserved specimens of the genus Sacabamapsis are known from Australia. Aspraspidina. Here in North America, we have our own group of early agnathid fish, the lovely Aspraspidines. These lived in North America during the late Ordovician. One of the places that you can find Aspridians is in the Ordovician Harding Sandstone in central Colorado. And this is the only group of agnathid fish that I've 
personally ever found in the field. The Harding sandstone is a fluvial nearshore deposit which contains pockets of scales of Aspradina fish, they, which might have accumulated um, from the leftover meals of various burrowing crustaceans. Aspradina feature star-shaped scales which are covered by thick, glossy enamoid cap. And they appear to have grown throughout the life of the fish. Body fossils are really rare, but enough have been found to show that the fish was covered in armor with no indication of fins. They had eight gill slits along the side of the body. The next groups are known from the Silurian period or younger, which begins around 40, 444 million years ago. So in 86 million years, fish went from tiny wormy like things to armored and toothed wormy tiny things. But the Silurian also saw the origin of jawed fish. However, many groups of jawless fish lived during the Silurian and into the late Devonian. Now these next groups are the more advanced jawless fish of the Silurian and Devonian periods. The Hedroostica. The Hedroosticans are a large group of jawless fish which are heavily armored with scales. Like the Aspiptanes and the Andraspidines, fishes of the, of the um, Ordovician period, these Hedroastractans have tough aspen. Now one difference they have from those earlier groups is that they have only one gill slit on either side of the head. The head was sandwiched between two large plates of armor, but, may, but many scales overlap them as well. Now some heteroostacans have snorkel-like mouths, while others have a narrow mouth opening. Anaspida. The next group is the anaspian fish, which are less armored than the heteroostacans, and are the first to develop more complex fins. The ge genus Pharangelepis exhibits paired ventral fins and an anal fin and a wide caudal tail with the notochord passing through the ventral tail tip. This is called an hep hepocircal tail. Along the sides of the fish are a series of 6 to 15 gill slits. The mouth was wide, which likely meant that these fish would filter out small invertebrates from the water. Now one thing to remember about these primitive fish is that they required movement to help water pass through the gill slits and to feed. Modern fish have movable parts to pass the oxygenated water across the gills, even when they're still. So like sharks, these early fish had no opercula passing water uh, through these gill slits. And aspians have chevron-shaped scales made of aspidine. Theliodonta. The theliodonts are a group of jawless fish that are specialized for a more active swimming lifestyle. Living high within the water column, they are mostly known from fossil scales, which are composed of dentine, often with a pulp cavity. They are known from the Silurian into the Devonian, but during the Devonian, they are restricted to Gondwana land, the southern continents of Africa, South America, Australia, and India. Body fossils of theodonts show that they had a forked tail with the ventral lobe containing the notochord, a hypocircal tail. Some even had lobed fins on either side with a ventral and dorsal fin, allowing them greater mobility. The gills numbered six to seven, which is similar to the number that sharks have, galeasidae. The next group, the Silurian galeapsidines, are known only from southern China and Vietnam. They have large head shields with a wide diversity of shapes and forms. Their broad and flat heads likely made them like modern rays in their lifestyle, living along the ocean floor. 
One of the key innovations found in galliopsins is that uh, they have an additional opening in the head shield for a nostril. This single opening, sometimes oval or a, a narrow slit, served as an opening for water to pass through a separate, separately from the mouth. This likely was important since these fish fed in the muddy waters of the ocean floor and having a separate nostril allowed these uh, less muddy, muddy water to pass over the gills and provide oxygen. Reconstructions of the skulls show the presence of olfactory bulbs, outgrowths of the brain which allow chemosensory um, senses of smell. Hence, galliopsids are the oldest group known to have had an acute sense of smell. And the eyes were also well developed, as well as the pineal openings. Now, galliopsids lack paired fins and likely moved along the ocean floor using their strong tails. Some phylogeny uh, studies place galliopsids at the, as the closest fossil group to jawed fish, while others suggest a closer relationship to the next group. Osteostraca. The Osteostracians are the most diverse of the Silurian and Devonian agnathid fish. They are the first group of fish with paired pectoral fins, which extend from an area just posterior to the head shield. Osteostracteans are also the first group to exhibit an endoskeleton that extended into these pectoral fins. These skeletal support, supported fins allow the Osteostracteans a greater ability to move around in the water. The fossil record of these are, is really good because they have a large bony head shield called a carapace that fossilizes really well. These head shields show that Osteostracteans have eyes positioned near the top of the head. Now the head shield also allows for the study of the brain in these early jawless fish. By reconstructing uh, the CT slices that are taken by an x-ray. The brain is separated into three main areas. The forebrain, the telecephalon, the pons, and the medulla in the back connected with the spinal cord or dorsal nerve cord. One of the most advanced features of the osteostrichthian brains is the presence of cranial nerves. Now in humans, we have 12 cranial nerves that extend out of the brain in these primitive fish, six of the cranial nerves can be delimited from the fossilized head shields, including nerves for eye movement, the optic nerve, trigeminal, facial, and vagus nerves. The head shield also exhibits a network of, of canals that have been interpreted as a sensory system for detecting small electric fields in the water. All right, you should now be able to summarize the major groups of primitive jawless fish living during the early Paleozoic. In the next video, we'll look at the two living groups of jawless fish. Thank you for watching. If you would like to learn more about Utah State University's geology program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website at benjamin Links are found in the descriptions below.